If you're tuned in now, you are listening to The Bizarre AF, a place where we talk about the strange, the unusual, the unknown, and all things Bizarre AF. I'm Alicia, your hostess for today's episode. And as always, we ask that you keep an open mind, keep a skeptical ear, but you keep on listening to those facts as we take you on our newest journey. Psychics paid by the government? Kevin, my boo, how are you? Hey, baby girl, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Um, yeah, it's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute. Yeah, I think. I mean, I'm just gonna I'm gonna come out and say it. Say it, especially to our people that I know listen to this on a regular basis. <laughs> We're a little late. Sorry, <laughs> We're a day late. But you know what? Also, mm-hmm. we had to be a little bit late it's the holidays yeah it's christmas time girl got things to do exactly <laughs> you know we need you guys are important but you guys are like super important right we just don't have our shit together no that's i'm kidding exactly. i'm kidding i'm kidding <laughs> yeah, no that's kind true, of, <laughs> it's kind of true. true. <laughs> you know what we can admit when we're wrong right true so hashtag truth ha- hashtag truth <laughs> <laughs> so um well one happy holidays thanks happy holidays to you too let's do a little yeah let's a little, little cheersies here I did bring um, actual champagne. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's tasty. It's tasty. You know what? There's honestly nothing greater than no. champagne. It's That's, just, it's so easy to drink. It's and, so- um, you know, it's a quick go to, taste delish. Taste delish. But also, like, I look, I'm like, okay, am I like a little hoity toity? Well, well, maybe. <laughs> That, yes. Am I a little sure. extra? Sure. Are we a little extra sometimes? Sure. Yes, we are. And you know what? We know quality. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Champagne. Yeah, <laughs> this thank you. this uh, this uh, episode sponsored by Champagne. champagne. <laughs> oh my God! Are you kidding me? I would love that. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Can somebody who sells champagne please sponsor us? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. We would be happy to do a whole episode on champagne. <laughs> yeah. On your champagne. We can find uh, some weird shit to talk about. The, oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> um. <clears throat> So I thought um, we actually have a voicemail mm. um, that uh, a listener called in and left, which we, I know that um, we don't mention this a lot. We, we don't probably mention should. it a lot. We probably should. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But on our website, the bizarreaf.com, um, that you can go to the website, click on the yellow mic in the lower right uh, or the lower right corner, mm-hmm. and then you can just record a direct voicemail. Yep. Um, you can also just call our phone number, yep. which is 970 364 Three six six three. We can make a little jingle. Three six four three six six three. Yes. <laughs> you know what, Kevin? You need to for sure do that. <laughs> okay. Um. So uh, when you call up, we're not going to answer the phone, but you can leave a voicemail. And I thought that we would do that. We were talking about this before. We'll t- we'll uh, cover the call um, at the end of the podcast. Yeah. But what I will say. Uh huh. It's a good question. It's a good question if it's our jam yes. let's just say it's totally our jam it's weird yeah. af yeah. bizarre af it's our jam yeah and yeah you want to stick around and listen definitely yeah. definitely so <clears throat> okay moving forward mm. did you ever see the movie men who stare at goats men who stare at goats <laughs> no i know it sounds really weird right how old is this movie? Uh, you know what? I think it came out in like 2005 or something like that. Okay. No, this is new to me. Star-studded cast. Like, really? Talking, I believe like George Clooney was in it. Like, it was like a huge movie. It won some awards. Wow. I have not seen it. New for me. So, okay. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. But it is weird. And it's actually what our topic today is based on, which is Project Stargate. Have <gasps> you heard of Project Stargate? Does it have anything to do with Stargate like... The Stargate, like that I'm thinking of. The series? Yes. I wish, because that would be so cool. that's so cool. No, it just like had, it had that name. That's what they called this like government project. Okay. Um, But 
gosh. Okay, so if you haven't seen like Stargate the show, mm-hmm. they had like these big old like um and there were ancient ancient s- like rings. Yes. That you would walk through and it would basically be like a transportation. Yeah. Right? Of yeah. like a different world, different time, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. And all it, over. Yeah, and if if you saw the original movie, it actually they uh raw was the god raw. The god raw was really I don't know if he's the even necessarily the inventor, but he would use these. And this is how he helped. This is why the pyramids existed, so he could land his ship. Those ships, those pyramids were the same size as his ship. Ancient aliens, bro. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, wait, what were we doing before before it started? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so anyways, we're going to go back to 1978, Kevin. Mm-hmm. We're in the thick of the Cold War. Um, the world is laughing basically about how extra the U.S. and Russia are with each other. Okay. Um, and their one-upping of each other went. Mm-hmm. Now, Kevin, do you want to explain what the Cold War was, or do you Ooh, want God, me to? Yeah, well, yeah, you can do it. But I, yeah. I, I, I just so I this was I was still a baby. Yeah, I was babes. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was things were really tense between U.S. and Russia and. You hear about the Cuban missile crisis. Missile crisis. Mm-hmm. And apparently if you watch documentaries and shows and people that talk about that, like we were butt ass close. Yeah. To nuclear to war. War. Yeah. Yeah. Some scary, scary times. Totally. But yeah, go go into more into the Cold War as, as a whole. I kind of there okay, so there's this girl on um on uh TikTok that I love. Um and she likes to distill things into uh, <laughs> into stuff that I can really understand, like whether it's the ec- economics or like. Uh, yeah. So I kind of channeled her when I was thinking about okay. the situation between nice. Russia and the U.S. during cool. the Cold, Cold War. Great. So I kind of think that like Russia and the U.S. were treating each other like ex-lovers who were still obsessed with each other. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So I love you. I hate you. I love you. I hate you. <laughs> I need to be more popular than you. Okay. I need to be better. But like, I'm obsessed with everything you're doing, <laughs> yeah. but I'm still trying to get like my own friends kind of thing. Uh huh. So like ultimately in the 1960s, we know about the space race. Uh huh. The U S and Russia were racing to go into outer space. Yep. The U S won the moon. Yep. Right. Yep. We know how that kind of, um, how that ended, but at at this point in the 1960s, we're we're past World War II. Mm-hmm. The rest of the world kind of has its own issues. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Once again, we're going back to my analogy. The rest of the world had pimples, <laughs> you know, hair growing in new places, uh-huh. body odor, uh-huh. voice changes. It was a lot. Hormones are just racing, uh-huh. so they're paying attention to their own shit. But the UN, U.S. and Russia had to measure, if you know what I mean, against uh, each other. Uh-huh. So they started clicks. Mine's bigger than yours. Mine's bigger thing. than exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Mine's bigger, mine's thicker, uh-huh. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they started clicks, and which I'm calling clicks, but it was really NATO and the Warsaw Pact. So NATO was the North American Trade Agree or organization. Um, that was the U.S. is like cronies or click that they started. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, you're our friends, right? We're all allies. And that was actually like all of their allies for World War II were also involved in NATO. And then you have the Warsaw Pact, which was all of Russia's like friends. That was their click. Mm -hmm. These were both high school cliques and both of them were kind of like bullies trying to get other countries to join them to be the most big, like the biggest, the most popular um, in the world, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So let's go back to 1978. They're both superpowers, world superpowers. Yeah. And they're trying to get any kind of lead possible um, on each other. So uh, cue the United States, the Defense Intelligence Agency, which is one of those classified budgets within the Department of Defense. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we talk about black budget all the time, right? Yes. Like, <laughs> it's something that we talk about when, when especially with the military. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, and namely, these black budgets are under the auspices of national defense or national mm-hmm. security, sure. right? Mm-hmm. All that money, we don't know how much, is going where for what? 
So what do you think, Kevin? Um, how much of a percentage of the U.S. money um, mm. would you say is eaten up by the military? Oh. And and this is just like mainly like in more recent years. Oh, gosh. But I got this number. Huh. That's a great question. I'm going to say. That's a good question. Fifty-five. That's a that's pretty that's pretty close. Officially, what's like parsed out initially is twelve percent. Okay. Okay. Really small. Uh huh. And I remember seeing those pie charts, and I was like, "That's bullshit." Uh huh. <laughs> There's more than that. Right, because probably some stuff they can't <laughs> even talk about. Right. Oh, I I I highly doubt that. Like the money, they're not going to show all of. It's We're like, really giving seventeen billion. No, yeah, yeah, it's like it's like when you buy too much shit on Amazon or whatever, and you, all these boxes come back, <laughs> yeah. and like you're like, oh shit, I don't want my you know partner uh -huh. to see how much shit I just right. bought. I'm gonna so archive I'm gonna, that order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, archive the order. Like sneak it into the house and be like, yeah, am I shameful that I bought this thing? Kind of, but it makes me happy. Whatever. So. It's actually um, half of the dis U.S. discretionary spending. So we have like a budget yeah. that the U.S. says, okay, this is how much we're allocating. Yes. Then there's a discretionary budget. They can spend wherever. Exactly. Uh -huh. And that is half half of the, dis of the discretionary budget uh -huh. goes directly to the military. So it ends up On to be- On top of whatever they've- The 12%. Yeah. It ends up being- a third of the U.S.'s annual budget. A third. Is going directly to the military. percent that we know of. That we know of. See, that's the thing. Yeah. We really need to make some fucking tinfoil hats because every time <laughs> we make a, a, co a comment like this, mm -hmm. we need to put on our tinfoil hat and just uh, be like, okay. Yeah. So I do think that it's more than a third. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way. So yeah. um, all this money has to go somewhere. And there are only so many, like, you know, guns, tanks, outfits, I mean, uh, uniforms, <laughs> not outfits. outfits. You're hilarious. <laughs> Shut up. Like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, uniforms um, that these branches need. So when you're fighting um, a war of being the world's most popular, you need to pull out all the stops. And any mm -hmm. rumor um, you may hear, you act on. So you hear that someone's doing something. Right. You act on it. <laughs> you act on, act on it. Marvin just wants to join. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> so um, in 1970, some intelligence officers get word that Russia is putting a ton of money into psychotronic research. Psychotronic? What is psychotronic? It's like psychic kind oh, of Oh, it's research. a term for psychic research. I think it's like just one of those old uh -huh. words. And, and also like it's like one of those things where like, oh, it's not psychic research. It's sure, psychotronic. Psychotronic because like. Also, it's electronic or something. I don't gotcha. know. Makes it sound lo more legit. Well, yeah. I mean, not to digress, but yeah. they, uh, yeah, um, we're going to, am I going to talk about it in the upcoming episodes? Sort of. I'm going to mention it. Um, but they put them in these electron, the psychics in these electronic devices, sort of speak, mm -hmm. that allows them to do psychic things. Ooh. So maybe that's how they came like up with psychic. It? Yes. Oh, interesting. Twinsies. Totally twinsies. So uh in so our next maybe episode. that's how they came up with psychotronic. It must yeah, it had to have been because at that time, like that's when electronics are really taking yeah, off, right? Yeah, yeah. Computers aren't taking up I right. mean they're still taking up whole whole rooms. And they're like, not gonna really just say, oh we're messing with psychics. Yeah. Yeah, then make it a little more Fancy. Yeah, make it a little <laughs> bit more fancy. And once again, you're against Russia. You hear Russia's doing it. Yeah. And the US is like, anything you can do. I can do better. Exactly. I can do anything <laughs> better, better than, than you. you. Exactly. Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> so the US uh, decided to start rounding up money for uh, the psychotronic research. And so research at Stanford began. Um, and instead of calling people psychics, they called them remote viewers. Uh huh. Yes, yes. Yeah. So have you heard of remote viewing? I uh, certainly have. Okay. Yes, this ties into exactly what I was talking about. So, and that's going to be our next episode. So it's almost like a, maybe a continuation of this episode. And we did yeah. not plan this. No. I love how it works. And I'm out not going to necessarily, I won't dive it deep into it, but. But we are going to talk about it and how it worked better with twins when you had twins that would 
connect. This re- oh, didn't yeah. do this remote viewing. And you'd have one twin in Russia, one twin in the United States, and the twin in Russia is showing the twin in the United States all this shit. Interesting. Uh, huh? Oh, my God. I'm so excited for that one. <laughs> because this is going to be, like, probably a different side. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah, remote viewing. It's actually kind of like a, at that point, the government decided to change the word for psychic. It's a fancy term for psychic. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they didn't want uh, people to think that they were cuckoo. Of course. And and have psychics right. on the payroll. And if you say psychic, yeah, exactly. You're like, exactly. oh, here we go. Discretionary oh, spending, like, psychic. psychic? Yeah, yeah. No, remote <laughs> viewer. Uh-huh. What is that? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's like one of those bullshit job titles. Yep. Right? So <clears throat> this is very, very similar to what they've done with UFOs. Now totally. UFOs are not called UFOs. UAPs. They're UAPs, not unidentified flying objects because there's such a stigma attached to it. It's yep. Un- aerial, unidentified. Yep, exactly. Aerial phenomenon. Yeah, or... unidentified aerial phenomenon, which is basically the same fucking thing. <laughs> it's of it's course the exact it's the same, same thing. thing. It's just like, we're going to change it's that. It's just not a 1950s UFO. Yeah, exactly. So um, we have researchers and these researchers are actually um, at Stanford. Um, Russell Targ and Harold Puth- Puthoff. Okay. We'll just call them Russell and Harold. Yep. Um, and they said that in order for these people to actually join, they had to have a 65% um, accuracy rate to join uh-huh. like this yep. project. Yep. Yep. Um, and this is before the project is official. This is like just the initial um, researching um, at the Stanford Institute. Um, so, um, so the clients were, uh, or excuse me, that they were tested. They tested a lot of people, including y- Yuri Geller. Have you heard of Yuri Geller? Hmm. Don't know. Yeah. Doesn't sound familiar. It. When I tell you a little bit more about Yuri, I might know. You'll for sure know. Okay. Yeah. So um, he he was like the most infamous one. Um, and at this point, in about 1972, the Department of Defense sees that there is like a success rate with these individuals, um, the remote viewers. So uh, they start paying closer attention to this. And an Air Force psychologist sees this success and asks a fellow psychologist at the University of Oregon to go to the Stanford Research Institute and investigate. And specifically, he tasked him to look at Yuri Geller. So Yuri, I said, you you will know uh-huh. all about him. Uh-huh. Um, he's actually still alive today. And um, OK, do you remember the there was a guy who could bend spoons yes. with his mind. Yes. You remember that? Yes. That's him. It is. That's him. Oh. Yeah. And he was all over talk shows. Yes. Like, yes, like in the 80s and 90s and 70s. Yes. Um. So when you look him up, the search results show that he's actually a musician and a magician and that he believes he's a psychic. But they don't, they say like that's So was it is. an illusion? Is that what people argue? Uh, I think... So if you ask him, uh-huh. he's psychic. But what does that have to do with bending spoons? Right, exactly. Um, he's infamous. We'll we'll, we'll okay, see. Like okay. this dude is infamous. Okay, he's from Israel, and before coming out as a psychic, he was a paratrooper in the Israeli army. Oh. Um, he did see some action. He was injured during like a battle. Um, in Israel, it's actually mandatory for people to serve in the military. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, and that's all I wanted to say. About positive about him so there we go you go yuri (laughs) you did your thing so during these experiment experiments the um that oregon uh university professor yes um his name's ray hyman he actually goes and looks at yuri geller and he discovers that geller was a complete fraud Uh oh. and as a consequence both of our the guys who were um handling the the, the whole experiment at the yes. Stanford Institute. Yes. Um, he, uh, they both lost their government contract. Okay. So, uh, and okay. So they, I don't know why, but like this guy Geller and, Tar- uh, or, but Geller and Targ 
um, they both really liked each other and they would not stop working with him with uh, Yuri Geller, the, the spoon bending dude. Really? They just believed that he was like legit. Even though he was completely defrauded. Yes. And people were like, no, this guy is a total idiot. Wow. <clears throat> They're like, no, 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 he's for real. We need to like go around, show him, and like try to get money our- ourselves. Hmm. So they are touting his abilities. And of course, Yuri was very happy to oblige. This led him to be televised in 1973 on the biggest late night show. Mm. The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Mm. That was the biggest one. You wanted to be a success, like oh, that yeah. was like that's where you go. That's where you go. It was infamous, like, and Johnny Carson is also a performer. The dude has some a background in magic and being a magician. Oh, so is, was that the the guys in which he Johnny Carson wanted him? Do you think? I think that. They had just like heard about him that he was doing like the Stanford Research Institute. They needed someone like interesting, interesting. to go in on. So he uh, he goes and I actually have a clip and it's going to be in the show notes um, below for mm-hmm. this episode. Yeah. Um, but uh, Kevin and I are going to watch this episode mm. and then we're going to talk or this part of this pod, uh, this clip. Yes. Um, and I'll put the timestamp that you want to watch from for Yuri. Um, but we'll talk, we'll be right back and we're going to talk about it. Perfect. Yay. So we are back after watching the Johnny Carson, uh, episode, which if you guys had watched, you will understand why I did not want to put this on the podcast. Yeah. That would have been painful to be like driving in your car and listening. Yeah. That would have been Uh, painful. It's like, it's like one of those things where you're sitting there and it's just like, Okay. You you need Two to minutes? watch the the yeah you you really need to watch it you yeah. have to watch it you can't just listen to it <clears throat> and we came right back to it. we didn't even talk about it we didn't we, although we, we were we shut it off we came back on I I wanted to <laughs> there were excuse me colleague I just burped thank you champagne um no like while we were watching it like oh yeah I, I wanted to say so many things to you. And get your thought process, but I have well, no Well, did you clue. see me rolling my eyes? I rolled yes. my eyes a few times. Yes, I actually heard your eyes roll <laughs> to the back of your head. Yeah. It was amazing. I've never heard that before. It was crazy. Okay. So just like oh kind of a God. description, whether or not you're going to watch it. Um, I'd say definitely watch it, of course, but um, but I'll give you the synopsis. So right. um, Johnny Carson show, it was televised live, mm-hmm. FYI. Um, so they only had so much, um, of the show left once Yuri actually got on it. Um, and Yuri, uh, okay. So they were already running behind on this particular show. That's just like a taboo. Yuri, while he was doing these experiments, he asked for specific items to use. Um, I told you before, he's known as the spoon bender. And this was prior to the episode, right? He's telling yes. them these are the things you can or should have. Yeah, it was which kind was kind of sorry to interrupt you. Mm-hmm. It was weird. It was he they they brought they mentioned to the fact that these are some of the items that they had done before or that they had mentioned or something. But then during this the show, he acts as though he was surprised that they brought these out and he, and ultimately wished they wouldn't because he would rather have answered the 30 questions that they had given him 40, ahead of time. Yeah. Oh, 40, excuse me. Yeah. As opposed to doing these things. Okay, so yeah, that's exactly what I was going to get to. Um, he would ask, he'd have a list of items. One of them were film canisters. Okay, so we don't use film canisters anymore. And at that point, these were metal canisters. Yeah, metal. Um, when I remember taking pictures, plastic. It was plastic, you know. And that's yeah, those I little black ones with the yeah, little gray black tops. ones, or they'd have yeah. like the clear ones too towards the yeah. end. But like my grandmother would use them as like pill, like vitamin sure. holders, yeah. whatever. Yeah, these were full on nice metal, They're like metal. They kind of looked like um. Like a tea strainer, like a bigger tea strainer. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were like that kind of cylindrical, like maybe solid. yeah, solid, um, maybe like two uh two inches high. Yeah, like maybe like 
This seems just like a little bit bigger if you think of a film canister. It just seems like just a little bit bigger than that. For but some people don't know what a film canister is. True. Like. So, yeah. So, I, I was a good point. <laughs> So imagine a cylinder, maybe an inch around and an inch and a half to two inches tall. Like think of like a D battery. A D battery. There you go. Yeah. That's about the size. There you go. So, um, and they're hollow. There's nothing inside of them, but they have like a lid and, a um, and an actual container. So you have, you screw on the lid. Um, and it's like, I don't know, kind of like aluminum or something. Yeah. It looked aluminum. So then he had some clocks, some like pocket watches. Didn't do anything with that. He also had spoons. He talked about them, but didn't do anything. He with didn't them. do anything with about right. them. He did say that the way that he found out his uh, powers, his like psychic powers, was he was able to move the hands of a, of his watch in hours. That he could move them without touching it, without winding it or or touching it at all. It would move, and then also the way that one he could found out that he could bend metal was because one of the hands, hands were bent. That's his, under glass. Like, under glass, yes. So that's what he had said. Now, when he gave the prop master, and a prop master is like someone who is in charge of all the items that are going to be used on a stage. Um, when he gave the prop master the list of items that he would need, one of the items were, for the spoons were um, aluminum spoons. He didn't say any kind of spoon. It was specifically an aluminum spoon. Now, when Yuri came out, do you remember he said he looked at the prop table or like the table that had all of his props on it and he said, oh, you guys are making me nervous. Do you remember him saying that? Yes. He's like, this is making me nervous. And it's, yes. the spoons were not aluminum. Is that what it was? I think that's what threw him off because that's one of the more fantastical like items that he can actually bend. Yeah, or the drastically. Aluminum. Yes. And if you think about it, think about an aluminum can. Oh, yeah. Pretty easy to bend. Bloop. Right? Um, now, what he also didn't know because he didn't do as fucking because, Sorry research. to interrupt. Not to interrupt. But when yeah. you, if you had an aluminum spoon, especially a thin one, and you were rub it back and forth, just applying pressure, honestly, would bend it. Would bend it. For sure. I mean, think about when you're having a soda or a beer or something. Yeah. Or a white claw, whatever, whatever your pick your poison. But like if you just like barely push uh -huh. your thumb into it, yeah. you're gonna leave an indentation. Yeah. Now, aluminum spoons are a little thicker, thicker. than that, yeah. but but not by much. Yeah. Not by much. It's still pretty pliable. So he had actually asked for an aluminum spoon and was not given an aluminum spoon. Is that spoon. why? Because it was engraved. Didn't they mention something that that spoon was engraved? Yeah. So it, says, it said something on the spoon or something. He was like hung. I think, if you're asking me, he came out, he looked at the spoons, which is the most fantastical, like big thing that he and could do. And realized he couldn't do it. And realized he would not be able to bend it because he didn't have enough time to do it. Right. And he knew the show was running behind. So this was a live broadcast that they were doing. And they knew they only had so much time left. And so he was like- Dragging it out. I thought so. So when the, the first uh, item that he started to do was there was like um, 10 canisters, those film canisters that were aluminum, um, D battery size. One of them had water in them. The other ones, the other nine did not. And so he did by process of elimination and he literally put his hand on top, not on top, like he wasn't touching, hovering. but hovering over to try to feel the water, right? Um, <laughs> God, I did that's just when like- my eyes started rolling. Right, right. And, he, and Johnny Carson, he was messing with the wrong bitch that day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can, we were talking about this like d while we were watching it. The shade, the shade. <laughs> <laughs> that Johnny Carson was giving Yuri Geller during this fucking interview. Crazy. It was, oh, <laughs> chef's kiss, beautiful. Yeah. I loved it. There was it. one time Yuri goes, well, I got rid of three. And then Johnny Carson goes, and there's seven left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God. And he's like, yeah, I'm just not feel like he said something along the lines like, I'm just not feeling it. Or, or, uh, or uh, you're supposed to ask me questions or something. And he had another retort. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, 
Good God. Love it. It was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. And what I think was happening was Yuri was trying to drag out. No, okay. I think Yuri was trying to drag out the time because he knew that they were mm-hmm. running behind. Well, and he kept saying, I just, uh, this is the other thing. Yeah. Like, if you don't start off your, uh, I don't want to say presentation, but you don't want to start your thing off by saying, you know, sometimes I do get it wrong. And sometimes I'm just, I can't feel it. And sometimes I just can't do it. And we don't want to start off that way. Not, okay. Like, <gasps> we're all human. <laughs> Poe Betty's perfect. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> However, you don't walk on to live television, the Johnny Carson show, which was, Golly, is there anything that that's it. like, that was it. Like, is there anything that's even like close to that right now? I don't think so. I can't think of none of the late that, night shows. That's what made him, that's what brought you into the light. Yes. That's yeah. Like started your career. It started your career. And like, there were only like three fucking channels or whatever, mm-hmm, right? Like, exactly. it's not like you had hundreds of channels that was and the so difference. many things. Yeah. So everyone would tune in. Like, it was one of the few things that would be broadcasted at that time. So like, everyone was paying attention. Anyway, I'm going to go on to Johnny Carson and go, hi, I'm a comedian. So sometimes my jokes don't land and (laughs) sometimes I'm not funny. (laughs) uh, Please. (laughs) Yuri, get your shit together. (laughs) No, exactly. Like that's, that's the thing. Like you don't go out there. If you're going on to Johnny Carson, you're a psychic. You have to have, yeah, be a psychic. Like, okay, then like get some low hanging fruit. Like if you're not feeling it, you're like the spirit's not with you, whatever. I don't fucking know what it is. <laughs> like whatever it is, it's like, don't like sit there and, you know, say that like you can't do it. Like you're on the biggest show, like try to make something happen. So one of the other guests who is actually the guy from Fantasy Island. Did you ever watch that show? Yeah. Love that. The, the lead guy in fantasy, the tall one. That's, I couldn't tell who that, that was. was. Him. That, that was, him. was him? Yeah. Oh. I love Fantasy Island. If you guys if you guys can watch Rourke, Fantasy Island. Mr. Rourke. He w- he's so great. And then there's De Plain, De Plain. Yeah. What's his name? Um, Good God. Tattoo. Tattoo, yeah. So anyways, definitely w- worth watching. It's probably a kind of offensive, but whatever. It was like really great show at the time. Mm-hmm. And I still like it. Anyways, go to this island, fantasy, blah, blah, blah. You can have anything that you want. Yeah. Um, and bad stuff always happened but right. he was on the show and he was standing sitting right next to yuri on the you know in the chairs and so uh yuri uh says okay hold on to this um spoon put it on flat on your oh, hand right 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 right. so he has the spoon and remember we talked about it he had asked for aluminum spoons right he was not given aluminum aluminum spoons. No. So the moment when he walks out, he's like, oh, you guys make me nervous. Like all of this makes me nervous because he was not given what he wanted. So he starts putting his hands, like hovering them very oh, but closely. He, but, but back up. So he had the guy yeah. put the hand, the spoon on in the one spoon. hand and his other hand, yeah. he has him put his finger on the spoon. Yes. And then he's, then Yuri takes his hands and hovers over the guy's finger finger who is over the spoon who is in his palm yes. and hovers and waves and waves and says other than my body heat do you feel pressure on you know pushing down and he says yes yeah and we're watching it and we're watching it and he says i'm not seeing anything happening drastically but he has the guy take his hand off the spoon and you do, in fact, see a bit of a dent. Yes. In the spoon. You actually do see a bit of a dent in the spoon. There's a, and it's a small one, right? It's, small. it's not very dramatic. No. Johnny Carson is not impressed. Not impressed. <laughs> not impressed. <laughs> but now, so I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I go, yes. well, if, if it was a normal spoon, there's no way you could create that dent. Like, you can't create that little bit of a, of a, a uh, 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 slope, a, a little curve in a solid spoon. You just can't do it. It would it would V. It would almost V. Sure. You see what I'm saying? As opposed to like this gradual well, slope of a finger. But if you have someone who's putting their hand closer and closer to your hand, you might press down. It's the, po- I, if you're asking me, 
It's the power of suggestion. It's possible. Um, have you ever seen a magician? Oh yeah. Like live. Have you had them do things to you? Well, like, yes. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So when I was a kid, I saw a magician and they said, hold your hand really, really tight. Mm -hmm. As tight as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And I held it really, really tight. Really, mm -hmm. really tight. Until you killed the bird. No. <laughs> Did you crush the bird in your hand? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I wish. No. And actually, I don't wish, but you know what I mean. So I held it really, really tight, and he said, now open up your hand, and there was a ball inside of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I think is he had this, like, thing, and I'm a sweaty-ass person. Oh, that's some water. <laughs> well, it's because he had put the ball in your hand already. Before, and I had yeah. no idea about it. Yeah. Right. It's a slip. It's the slip of a hand. Yeah. Also, if you're pushing down... And you want to make, this was painful, my friends, to watch. This interview was, I mean, you want to feel good about yourself. You want to cringe. Like, watch this fucking, yeah. this like interview with Johnny Carson. Because Johnny Carson is calling his shit out. He is a, he is like, yeah. he is giving him all the snark. So is this before or after? So was this appearance on Johnny Carson before or after he was called out as a fraud? This was uh, after he was called out as a fraud. So- when they had like Project Stargate had started, they had some money. They started doing that research at Stanford Institute. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yuri Geller was like one of the star pupils because he was doing these extreme things like, you know, bending spoons, all this shit. So a lot of people were paying attention to him. That's why our University of Oregon professor came in and the Air Force psycho psych psychologist was like, hey, check out this Yuri Geller guy. Mm -hmm. Because like, Red flags are going up in my head. Mm -hmm. Can you please go and check it out? Because you're an outside source. You're, you know, if it were me saying it, it could be issues with my career, blah, blah, blah. So he ends up doing that. Studies Yuri and is like, yeah, this guy's a fraud. Yeah. This guy's not legit. This is most certainly something that we cannot fucking explain. Yeah. So, so this was after because those um, researchers were like, no, Yuri's the real deal. They like, were really hitching their cart to this train wreck, <laughs> you know, of a dude. And they really believed that he was real. They really believed in him. Now, another thing to note about Yuri is like, he's very attractive. He was very, like, very handsome. Super handsome. Like yes. he even has like his little like. He has little 70s like chest showing yes and yeah. his chest looks great and like his hair is great and like he's very like he's like olive like like skin tone like yes. very like very handsome man yeah very um and you could tell as he was like having the conversation um that he was charismatic yep so those kinds of people attractive charismatic yes get away with a lot get away with so much shit yeah thank you yuri so yuri comes in and they are hitching their freaking you know um they're hitching themselves to them, to this guy. They're like, we believe he's the real deal. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to get more money to do more research with Yuri. And because they, it ran out, right? Like the government's like, we're not funding you. We're not funding him for sure. Mm -hmm. But they're like, well, we still want to study with him. So that's where he started going on all these talk shows. He was, I swear to God, he was on like Sally Jesse Raphael. I mm. love Sally Jesse Raphael. <laughs> and wh who's the other guy? Um, the guy Arsenio? with the white hair. No, the guy with the white hair. Oh, Donahue. Donahue, Phil Donahue. I loved, I loved both of them. I love Sally Jesse because of her. She was fabulous. Anyways, so I swear to God he was on that, but he is a total fucking fraud. You hear Yuri Geller. You like, and you know about spin bending. Yeah. Because of that. However. Yeah, wasn't, was not impressed by that interview at all. <laughs> At all. No, <laughs> no. So you don't, you don't really like him, huh? I wanted to, I wanted, I wanted to, and I wanted to go. Oh, guys, you guys are just being skeptics, and no, uh, uh, no, that was just shenanigans. You know, Yuri was like super stoked to like, yeah, you guys believe in me? Cool. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll go on these television shows. But he even was like quoted after the Johnny Carson show. He was like, I was let, I was out there sweating, and you can see the sweat. Like, if you guys watch the, um, mm -hmm. the actual like. Uh, footage like I don't know sweating. why he thought he could get away with that like Johnny Carson was a magician he did magic so if you saw like Yuri Geller was even like you're making me nervous because he keeps on changing the angles that he's watching this dude from mm -hmm. 
and because he, he knows all the tricks. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. You're not getting right. anything past him. Right. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, crazy. So he say as soon as he get, goes on, he just keeps on saying like, "Oh, sometimes I can't perform. Oh, this table's <laughs> making me nervous." It's like, okay, sometimes yes. you can't perform. We've all heard that. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> the excuses are laid, um, and you know he ends up being kind of shown out as a fraud. This does not necessarily stop the dude, okay? The dude continues to go on all these talk shows right after he was on another late night show or another like um, popular show. As He thought, oh, I'm not going to be on anything. Mm-hmm. No, they wanted him even more. Mm-hmm. And so like that's how you know about him is through like these – television shows because it was interesting it was fun it was like extreme mm, mm. and i'm sure they gave them they gave him his al- aluminum freaking uh spoons that he wanted right <laughs> which you know unfortunately <laughs> so <clears throat> one thing i did want to say like you know as far as uh the project went yes um when it wasn't just it wasn't when it was past like the research stage of it um they had different aspects of it that were approved and funded um yearly okay so every and the reviews were actually uh, made uh semi-annually at the uh, the senate and the house uh committee level so um these results of the psychics were reviewed and remote viewing was attempted with the results being kept secret from the viewer so like let's say um they had some intel about a spy or something they're like mm-hmm. where is the spy mm-hmm. So um, they thought that if they sh- if the viewer was shown the um, shown uh, that they were incorrect, that it would damage the u- the viewer's actual confidence and skill. So like they didn't tell these viewers whether or not they're right or wrong mm. when they had like the information, and it was actually the standard op- operating procedure for uh, years of this military. Sorry, domestic. so now was he one of these remote viewers? He or was initially he doing other things. Initially, he was one of the remote viewers. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then he was kind of kicked out of the project. But this okay. motherfucker went on into everything. So when you look yeah. at Project Stargate, Yuri Geller's name is so synonymous with it. Right. Well, sure. Because he was the public fraud. He was the public fraud. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And so so these remote viewers, so mm-hmm. they're not just telling. So that's scary. So these remote viewers are supposed to be doing stuff for the government. Yes. They're given like pieces of information, like here's a picture of a man. Please tell, tell me us where, where he, he is. is. Yeah, and they would say this or, is where he is. Would you imagine they could probably go, or they would go? I'm m- making this up. Sure. Like, look. Uh, so, did they attach to a person? Like, how did? So, like, was it like show me what's going on in the Kremlin? Tell me what's going on in the Kremlin right now. Or was it more like they had attached to a a. a de- it was both. It was both. So like, so one of the things that they had discovered was, okay, well, one of the things during that time, they're like, okay, even internally, like, where is this spy? Our spy? Like, where is this spy at? Mm-hmm. And they'd show a picture. This was the spy's information. Where is it? There was a woman who said he's in, uh, I think she said level uh, Wyoming. That's where this guy is. Here's his picture. She looked at him did like, I don't know, whatever she needed to do and said, he's in Lovell, Wyoming. Turns out he was actually in Lowell, Wyoming. But out of all the potential places he could have been, she was just shown like his information. Mm-hmm. She didn't know anything else. And she she miscommunicated or what she said was, sometimes the information comes in and I misinterpret it. Uh-huh. So like she misinterpreted the information so that it was, it was wrong. Instead of Lovell, it was Lowell. Lowell. Uh-huh. So they ended up finding him because of her information. Gotcha. So okay. it it was really to try to get any unknown people, information, events. Like, is this, are they, is this intel correct? Mm-hmm. But the problem with these remote viewers was they were not being told whether or not they were right there or wrong. Uh-huh. So it's like they had no idea whether or not they were correct. Well, I guess I can kind of playing devil's advocate. Like, why do they need to know? Um, because I don't know, like, I almost kind of feel like it could potentially be a compass. Like if you're totally on, you should know that you're on. Like 
if I'm doing work, I suppose in my that's job, true. Like if, like especially for that, we'll use that example that you just gave us a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Like if she would have known that it wasn't level, it was Lowell, then maybe next time she would know how whatever she had to translate to get to level, she knows it was Lowell, so maybe she can translate it differently. Yes, exactly. Yeah, maybe she could like read or interpret it. It's like when you don't have any kind of feedback, it's really hard to be accurate. Mm-hmm. And I think in that situation, it's really hard. So. Um, anyways, it, it could be anything. And this was during like military and domestic intelligence program, uh, programs like, or, um, uh, events. So internal and then external, mainly the Kremlin, mainly Russia. Um, so some of these intelligence applications viewers were actually, they claim to sense things in the future which is really interesting. Now, how do we measure that? How do we measure future? Does it happen? Does it not happen? You know? Do you know, would they call it out as such or did they just not know? Like, would they go, for example, would they go, hey, this is happening in the future or would they go this thing and then they'd be like, they don't know if that was in the, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Yeah, I think they, they would say that it was happening in the future. Interesting. Yeah, but it's like, what this seems so dangerous, if, especially if they were frauds. If they were frauds and like we're spending all this money oh on it, God. or which is like the best case scenario, right? Worst case scenario, you have people talking shit, or like, or they have their own like reasons to claim something. Like they have a vendetta against whomever. Yeah. Right. Um. So this program continues into the 1980s. And they had a lot of names for this project. Um, and it was integrated into different ones, which Grill Flame, um, Center Lane Project, um, Sunstreak was another freaking name of it. Um, into the 1990s, they see um, there was an individual, Edwin May, who controlled uh, 70% of the contractor funds and 85% of, um, of the data. Ultimately, basically what's happened, and it, altered from um so it was the security attached to it was um it was altered from the special access program to the limited dissemination which means it was kind of downgraded a little bit Uh um and it was given its final name that's when it actually was named stargate in 1995 the project was closed um uh, the bill, there was a defense appropriations bill directed at the program that it be transferred from the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, um, which is in, within the defense um, pro- program, to CIA oversight. Mm-hmm. And the CIA actually um, had a report commissioned by the American Institutes for Research, and they found that remote viewing had not been proven to work by a, se- by a psychic mechanism, and that it um, it wasn't, they said that it wasn't used operationally. So they cl- classified uh, or they declassified and canceled the program. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you're asking some people who were involved in it, they say, this is not the full story. The, what ended up happening was they just ended this program. The psychics who are actually working, you will not hear about. Mm-hmm. Of course not. Yeah. They are still working for the CIA. They just on moved. a program that no longer exists. Exactly. Sure. There's a lot of like speculation and people who are disproving it and using Yuri Geller as like the main, like the main person is to like, oh yeah, this is the bullshit like sure. program. But there are other civilian personnel who are actually involved in this program who are coming out and they're like, no, 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 I worked on that. And actually we were accurate. Like we found a lot of information. Um, <clears throat> there was a woman who actually, I told you about the one who found um, the spy yes. or the spy, the U.S. spy. Yes. There was another one they were talking about who um, had found uh, a nuclear weapon that was uh, – and on a plane that had crashed, they found the crash mm. by doing that. So, um, you know, here's the thing. We have a ton of folks that you can, you can look at, um, that ultimately, um, say, yeah, this is, this was something that was accurate. 
we found spies. We had intelligence. Should the government have access to this like knowledge? Should they like from my perspective, I don't know if we should even have a program like that because you have two factions who are fucking playing popularity contest against each other. People say the Soviets were actually trying to fuck over the U S and saying, yeah, yeah, no, we have like psychics on the, on the pay grade. And Mm -hmm. like in reality, they actually didn't. Mm -hmm. Was that what was happening? Is this something that actually was legitimate that we did have psychics that were being used every day and we just never heard about them because the declassified information that was released was never it was never released like it was part still part of the classified information i'm uh, i'm in that camp i'm in that camp too of course we hear about yuri geller of course the first project or the first individual that we hear about even in the wikipedia article that you're looking at about project stargate is yuri geller a total fraud yes this dude was a total fraud you know clearly a total fraud (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. yeah like he like failed like miserably i mean he still is living today and is a musician as well and a magician and he believes a psychic but like you know is this something that that we can look at and say these black budget you mm-hmm. know, military uh, departments. Mm-hmm. There's no any way that the military thinks they can get a slight edge. They're going to take it. Mm-hmm. And I personally think like, you know, trying to cover a, a topic like Project Stargate. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to know that the United States military is interested in psychics and knows that there could be some value behind it. I mean, mm-hmm. this project lasted for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. And it was dissolved into the CIA. <laughs> like it goes from the Defense Department into the CIA, which is even has like even more black budget shit and is able to hide things better. Like it's a no brainer for me. In our next episode, we're gonna talk about the CIA. They're CIA dude. Fucked up. Dude, they've got so much shit going on. Like they are dude. Like they've got Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's onions, onions upon onions, yes, levels and levels and layers yes. and layers. Yes, they're they they're doing so much with so many different facets of things mm-hmm. that we don't even understand. Yep. And in in our, our episode in a couple of weeks, we're gonna talk about an, another thing that the CIA has is doing has done and they've been doing since the forties. Weird shit like yeah. that. And it's just, you know, things we don't understand, but like legit stuff that they will debunk. Yes. That, that everyone will debunk. They will debunk um, because we'll they also, don't want anyone to know about it. No, but we, yeah, like like we were saying, they will never tell us. No, of we course not. We will never not. know about the successes and the things that actually were avoided because of never. a project or a psychic or whatever. Never. Period. We'll never know about it. Never. I thought this would be a good episode to kind of talk about to get like a basis in remote viewing because there are individuals um, that I really want to talk about specifically that have helped out and helped out during past wars. We're talking World War Two that were on the government's, you know, uh, that's a good that's a good segue. We need to we definitely need to do an episode where we actually talk about not the crazy, dumb frauds, but the legit Yes. Peeps. I, and I have that. I, I wanted to talk about how, you know, the government does have black budgets and we don't know where the money is going towards. No. But just showing that they put this much money towards yes. a dude who is a potential fraud. Right. Like, I think it's important to cover. So, but this was a, it was a fun episode to kind of talk about. It was fun. Yeah. And I think, um you know, I think that we have like a good basis to talk about for our next episode. I agree. Meanwhile, we do have a listener. Ooh, we're going to listen to something fun, too. Yes. Yeah, a listener who is asking for advice. So um, we're going to share that. Before we do share that, uh-huh. um, I, if you guys want to, once again, uh, go onto our website and thebizarreif.com um, and submit your question or you know give us a call. I said yes. at the top of the episode um, what the phone number was. But um, also, um, if you have advice for this person, 
mm-hmm. because they are asking for advice. Yeah. Um, please share it with share, share it with, it with us, us, and yeah. we will um, we'll share it, we'll share it on. Yeah, you can put episode. comments in our Spotify. If you use yes. our Spotify user, you can do uh, comments in on the episode there. You can go to our website, like she Alicia go to our said. Instagram, go yes. to our anywhere. TikTok, uh, contact mm-hmm. us on our website. Leave us a voicemail. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. Let's listen to this question. Hey, fam. I love the podcast and value your opinions. So I wanted to reach out to get your thoughts on a pretty delicate subject that is an ongoing topic of conversation in my household. Uh, I have a 13-pound-ish dog um, that I want to get taxidermied. I think it's totally normal. Why don't people do this more often? Taxiderming pets, keep them forever right on your bedside table. Uh, Cause that's what I plan to do with my guy. He, he hasn't kicked it yet. He's got some dementia, some hearing loss, blurred vision, I'm sure. But um, yeah, I'm thinking a taxidermy is in his future. Is this bizarre as fuck or is this, is this a new trend? Maybe, I don't know. So let me know your thoughts. Well, first of all, thanks, Jacqueline, for that great oh comment. Yes. Thank you, Jacqueline. Second of all, I think you are a crazy bitch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Second of all, like bedside table taxidermy. <laughs> you crazy girl. I don't know. What are you going to do? You're going to be like, okay, put on my, um, like I have an entire routine before I go to bed. Uh-huh. Put on my sleep mask, like eye mask. Put on my <laughs> Laneige lip mask. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure my hands are nice and moisturized. And then kiss your taxidermy dog. Kiss my kiss my taxidermy <laughs> dog. Good night. Love you. <laughs> so let's so let's dissect this question. Yeah. yeah. First of all, I love my pets so damn much that I can't I can't I can't say that what she's doing is crazy. No. Because I mean, I love my dogs to death. Do you have a favorite? Well, see, we Roy and I have had two, we had two Dalmatians, Lucy and Ricky. <laughs> so cute. And now we have and Ricky with an eye because they're both girls. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and now we have Marvin and Gizmo. Uh huh. And I love them all equally. Okay, but right now. Okay, if I. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't have a favorite, Marvin. I know you have. Yeah, you Marvin for sure. Marvin's the one who's been in this episode, if you guys have been watching. Yeah. Uh, Marvin he's has... He's popping and popping in and out. Yes. Yeah, he's been he's popping He's been very out. needy today. Yeah. has. So, um, so I, I get it. I, I personally wouldn't do it. Okay. Um, But I get it. Yes. Um, Although, how come you don't taxidermy... Sorry, this is going to get gruesome and really <laughs> I was you'd get there. deep. But like, what if your child died? Would you taxidermy your child? No. Hail to well, the no. Well, it's probably illegal. <laughs> yeah, I think it's illegal, but they do have like forms of embalming. Um, and people will, like in different countries, they'll have emba- their embalmed loved ones like living, like technically living with them for a while, like oh, for do? a period. Yeah, it's actually one of the topics that I have on our topic list. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> so they will embalm the loved one. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we could try to get a mat- mortician or something on here. I think we probably could. I know some folks. And then the, this dead embalmed person mm-hmm. will be in the household for some period of time. Yeah, or they'll even be embalmed. Yes, they'll be like in the household, like embalmed in a fashion that they would have been living. So like, I think if this is in like South America or Mexico. Mm-hmm. Where I saw one, and even embalming, like, as they would be in their lifetime. So there was one guy who really loved his motorcycle. I wonder if he died on his motorcycle. I don't know. Fucking no. I'm just making mm. that up. But, like, he was posed on his motorcycle, like a crotch rocket kind of one. <laughs> yeah. Posed on it with his, like, sunglasses on and everything. Mm-hmm. But, like, his uh, crotch rocket was, like, standing. Mm-hmm. And he was, like, on it, mm-hmm. posed in a way that he would have been riding. Oh, my God. And, like, people went to the funeral. With and, him on his crotch rocket? Yes, yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, which is crazy. <sighs> so, like, human stuff can potentially happen. And, like, and some some cultures, people will um, have their loved ones dead and 
their like mummified remains will be living with or they'll like bring them out uh, like every year and have them with them because they're not like it's symbolizing like they've never really left mm-hmm. like they still are honoring their loved one uh-huh. and like they have a seat at the table gotcha right like an actual seat at the table even though they're rigor mortis and like all bones or whatever <laughs> you know like i said i can't i can't blame her for doing yeah. it and wanting to do it i think it's great uh-huh um you say you would not do it but i don't think i would personally do it okay no what if I'm roy just not, wanted I'm just not that kind of like i don't need the physical like right. me personally i just don't need that physical thing uh-huh well, what would you do when your dalmatians passed away they were cremated okay do you still have their cremate cremains no they were spread oh okay nice yeah by you yeah oh nice yeah Cool. I was like, no, you're just like, you <laughs> told the, the vet, you're like, whatever, <laughs> do whatever. Yeah. Throw them in a fucking, yeah. Uh, well, would whatever. you, would you taxidermy? Okay. This is going to be really morbid. Okay. So I think my, like my cat, Oliver, who I love to death, mm-hmm. he's not very smart, but he is just so, so <laughs> sweet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's how I like him. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Anyways. um, Yeah. Dumb and sweet. <laughs> yeah. Just really, really <laughs> dumb, but like needy. <laughs> Dave, don't listen to this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, so not dumb, but like, whatever. Um, anyways, um, he's so soft. So like I could see. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You are not going there. <laughs> like I, that is <laughs> no, no, stop it. I have because said this. The- <laughs> I've said this to Dave. I'm like, <laughs> We were actually talking about Cruella on the break. Uh-huh. Um, and like, okay, there was a time I'm like, oh my God, why would you ever skin Dalmatians? That's <laughs> awful. She's like, I want the coat. But I'm like, honestly, his fur is so soft. Like, uh-huh. would I want to pet him again? Okay, if I but knew skin the- him. But don't you don't have to stuff him because it's going to be hard. Oh my God, I'm sorry. But you think skinning is less weird than taxidermy? Yes, because then you can pet pet a soft fur as opposed to this stuffed hard animal what if we could put like um the beanbag material (laughs) 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 and then it's like not super like stiff oh like (laughs) maybe And then you could pose them like with their little legs crossed <laughs> on a little chair. Yes. And they can like, <laughs> oh my God, this is so fucked up. But like, you know, okay, you don't have cramps, but like I get cramps occasionally. And like they make these things like out of rice or like beans or whatever <laughs> that you can heat up in the microwave and then put it on oh your lower stomach and it's God. soothing. <laughs> so like Jacqueline, uh-huh. I'm with you, girl. <laughs> I'm with you. I think you should get your fucking dog stuffed stuff that dog <laughs> okay i say skin that dog and you, cremate the and then cremate and spread it in the world and then you still have a, pe- a furry fur okay and then you can We're, make a bean bag out of the fur then you, then you can have somebody but if you have like the skeletal remains uh-huh. like it would probably be more like oh my god marvin speaking is of- like shaking <laughs> oh my gosh because marvin oh, knows that we're talking shit about come stuffing here. him come on, Marv. Oh my God. That's why he's like, he knows he's he psychic. He's like, what are you he's doing in project with me? Stargate. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think she should do it. All I think right. She should do it. All right. There Jacqueline. You go, Jacqueline. Go. You have permission to, um, taxidermy your dog. Yeah. At least from a stamp of approval. all right well if you guys have any other questions and you want to want us to talk about them feel free to leave us a voicemail on our website click the little yellow microphone in the lower Mm -hmm. right hand corner at the bizarreaf.com or if you have a comment on this one or on this one you want to give jacqueline your comments (laughs) um or you can do the contact us on our form on our website or give us a call at 970- Something or other. Six one eight. <laughs> no, don't. No, it's nine seven zero three six four three six six three. And I'm gonna make a jingle so that we can all remember it. Oh my god, yes. Okay. Well, thank <laughs> thanks you for again. Today. Yeah, Fun thanks. episode. Thank you. Yeah, thank all right. You. See you guys. See ya. Bye. Bye.